But you can see if I come into GP over here and go to my cards, inventory, item. There's a 9999, but no 8888. <coughs> so it doesn't exist currently inside of uh, GP. So over in my SharePoint system, in my GP item request, I have a list. <coughs> So the salesperson can come in here and say, I want to add a new item. And out of our inventory or out of our catalog that we have from a particular manufacturer, I want to add this BP8888. Item description is its keypads. Item class is retail. My code here is just a field that lets me know what's going on once this all um, gets underway. Description, item class. There could be additional things that we might want to capture here when we create our item inside of GP. There might be things that you'd want to set up for that. Um, price, cost, those types of things associated with a particular thing, how many thing, uh, how many items we might be stocking, whatever it may be with regards to this particular item, we can have that filled in. Um, that may be a part of the process that you would add on here, so it would be the initial request um, for the item would just have a couple of things there. Um, the item number and the item description, and then as it goes through the process, you know, in a pricing department, accounting department, whatever it may be, purchasing, um, they could fill in additional information with regards to the actual item. So I'm going to go ahead and fire up my Outlook here. And I'm going to go to GP Demo, and you can see that I've got two new um, requests in here, one of which tells me, hey, um, I've got this item that needs um, approval. It's the approval process has started. Here's information about it. Um, and then I have a task that I need to be aware of. If I click on this task, I can actually open the task directly from email. I, didn't, I don't even need to go into SharePoint to approve the process. So the sales manager wouldn't even need to get into SharePoint to approve this request, they could do it directly from Outlook. So I'm going to say open this task. And you can see it was requested by me. I'm the approver. I know that's a little bit redundant, but uh, for the sake of the, you know, the demo, um, that's how we have it set up. So the status not started. Here I am making the request. The approval needs information. Um, we could add in a due date for this, so the escalation process can be kicked in based upon the required due date. I could add in my comments and say, you know, this item looks good. All right, so the item looks good. I'm going to go ahead and prove this process. I could reject it. I could request a change from the requester or I can reassign the task. So this is the default approval process right out of uh, SharePoint. I didn't create this. It's a workflow that um, can be applied directly to items. So I have this approve uh, button. I'm going to go ahead and say it's approved. So now over in SharePoint, if I take a look at that over there, I can see this item here, it's pending. I have this approval process. I'm going to go ahead and look at that. You'll see that I get a visual on this. Looks like I have approved it. I can come down here and I can see information. The approval has been successfully completed. All participants have completed their tasks. So I could add additional people into the approval process. I could do an escalation of the process. So let's say that um, an expense request or something like that where the manager needs to approve it and if the expense is over a certain dollar amount, let's say $500, then your um, 
CFO of your organization needs to approve it or on um, item, metadata, uh, price, whatever it might be. So <clears throat> our process is now approved. Um, we've got the task complete. We go back into our GP item request. You can see that it's approved here, the approval status, and I also have this code telling me that the item is created over in GP. So if I go back over into GP, I looked for it before, I couldn't find it. So now if I look for BP8888, there's my item, and here's information about it. So we're creating that information inside of GP based out of SharePoint. Um, we're using eConnect, um, calling an eConnect um, store procedure inside of the GP database which is built into GP um, just based out of the standard deployment. So all of those store procedures are available to us to go ahead and create items um, or other things inside of GP. And um, we can, like I said, add additional things like the cost, the price, but really the only thing that I needed here to get started with creating an item inside of GP was three things. I needed my item number, I needed my description, and I needed my class ID which I defined as being retail for this particular item. And that's it. So if I go back over into the our items here. So we made a GP request. Here's my heat pads. They created my workflow request, the approval process, and the task. So I'm aware of the fact that there's an approval started, and I'm aware of the fact that I have a task that I needed to complete. I went into the particular item for my task. I opened the task um, directly from my email. Didn't need to go into SharePoint. I approved the process, put in any additional information into the approval process um, request. And then I got an approval um, notification telling me that it was completed. And we are informed through email that all of the items are done, and I can see that my item got created inside of GP. I could then find my information over inside of GP. So you can see that we've created an item. Uh, like I said, we could add extended things like cost, um, pricing, those types of things, um, stocking inventory whatever it may be with regards to the item that we created, but I just um, wanted to show you that our basic three things were the item number, the description, and our class ID. So you give it the real world example. Here is the actual, <coughs> um, what I wanted to show you from a SharePoint perspective was that both things that I showed you, um, CRM and uh, GP case scenarios that I've shown you. We could do that with SharePoint Foundation. SharePoint Foundation is free to anybody who wants to download it. Um, it just would require you to have the infrastructure in place to be able to support the deployments in your environment. That's all that is required of you. There's no licensing costs, so you can have as many users on it as you want to have. There's no um, limitation with that, so you could have a thousand users. Um, it can be deployed to SQL, um, the base uh, version of SQL, which is free to you as well. Um, but there's limitations in terms of how big the database can be for your SharePoint deployment. And that limitation is 10 gigabytes for the database. So it can't be any more data than that. Um, beyond that, if you have just a regular SQL deployment, we could have the database get as large as you want for a foundation deployment. There are two additional levels of SharePoint that you can uh, purchase. There's a standard version, which is their um, SharePoint server standard. That gets a little bit more stuff that you can use and play with and have um, business functions um, be met with those what are called web parts. And then you have an enterprise level, 
which takes um, all of the information that you get in foundation and standard and gives you some additional things. One of those additional things is called InfoPath, which um, is a part of the office suite. The way that, one of the ways that you can deploy InfoPath is to a web-based system. SharePoint hosts it natively at the enterprise level. And for our client here, we created an InfoPath form with multiple the information that they're gathering. Each one of these buttons up at the top had a page um, that was at least a standard, uh, typical page long as you're scrolling. Um, so they captured a lot of information through the whole process. And at the end of it, once the approval process was complete, we created the item over NGP based upon all the information that we had gathered through the process. So you can see that this is a, an actual working form um, that we're doing. It's not just a list inside of uh, SharePoint. 